Hi, welcome to another Great Car Basic demonstration. This is part two because this is day two. Um, day two is going to involve um, using the software, Great Car Basic, to control program, program logic and, and, and some LEDs. Okay, so um, hi everybody, day two. Um, so yesterday we went through installing the software, we went through um, programming something very simply using a very small microcontroller but that's what we're going to carry on using okay so I'm just going to change the um, the view here into um, uh, into the chip that we're actually going to be using here so we can look at the chip and I've uh, changed it slightly um, because what I've actually done if I, I've added in a couple of LEDs I've added in another LED to give us a bit more power Okay, now I've also changed to two very small resistors. So, yesterday I have uh, the two resistors connected. Yesterday, so I had one resistor connected to one port. Today, we've got two resistors and two LEDs um, connected to these two ports here. So, um, what's important to understand is, is that um, we've got a as of yesterday, we have a programmer hooked up. We have the five wires, master clear, VDD, VSS, uh, ICSP data and clock attached to the chip. Okay, through that ribbon cable that you can see. That's the ribbon cable here. It's connected to a PIC kit 2 programmer. Um, what is it we're actually dealing with here? This is a, a 16F18 313 from memory <laughs> and it has it looks like um, these chips here that we can see um, these chips um, these chips here this one always reminds me of a Barbie doll toaster where you can sort of put toast on it but these are the chips I'm using a p-dip chip and this is the layout so we've got pin one uh, has got VDD uh, through to pin eight where it's got the VSS okay now the the thing about this is, is that it's a little bit confusing because my the work I'm doing here doesn't have the orientation. So I've, I'm actually flipped it around slightly to say, look, this is the orientation. Um, I've got pin one. Let me just change my mouse here. So I put the pointer back as it was an arrow. I've got pin one up here, pin two, pin three, pin four. So if I just change my view very slightly, in uh, my software here, in my desktop software, we can see that the orientation is the same. So I've got this chip here, which is um, this very small chip. Um, that chip itself, um, in in that um, PCB, in that uh, breadboard there, is the same orientation. So if I zoom in on that, we can see that um, Let me zoom in on that. There we go. We zoom in on it. Um, we can see the orientation. Now, that orientation is similar enough because I've actually put the that little circle that's on the chip there on the top or right hand corner. I put it here. I put here in the um, on this chip here. So I've got a red LED and a yellow LED connected to RA2 and RA1. And so what we're going to do is going to program those two up. OK. Um, have I got the um, have, I, have I got the editor loaded? I have. Okay, so look, let me just get rid of some of this stuff. I'll go into the editor. Here we go. Let's we'll get rid of that because that was me mucking around. I'm just going to show you what it does to start with. I think that's a really good. Let's show you what it's doing. Okay. All right. So it's currently programming it. There we go. Great. So what we've got here is um, what we've got here is a programmer. We've got the actual LEDs flashing on and off. You can see them there. Okay. And we'll look at that code. So what we're doing is we've got um, we're going to set the ports as outputs. We didn't do that yesterday. We're going to put the put these two ports as outputs because when we used it yesterday, it was automatically set for you. We're going to set it as an output. 
we're going to set a status or a state is either going to be on or off initially and then we're going to have it oscillate like it is now on and off now remember that this is pretty simple stuff in uh, great cow basic so um let's have a look at uh, synright and see how that works okay great so um what we've got here the same old chip as yesterday and i'm saying that i want to put these two ports ra1 ra2 as outputs that's the direction dir now if i press f1 i will see um the help for um i will see the help for dir let me just show you that oh there it comes up there. so we have extensive help if you press f1 over any of the um any of the um commands you will uh, definitely get the right help so we're going to set those two to outputs and then we're going to give them an initial set an initial value and we're going to set the initial value to zero for one of them and we're going to set one for the other that's on and off now you can do this many different ways this is one way of doing it um, i'm talking directly here to the port the pin the, the pin itself or the, the the bit within that port you can do you can set the port you can set the register you can set a whole load of things but ra1 is a really good way of doing it okay because it's very explicit ra2 is the same so i'm going to set them as zero and one and then i got my do, my do forever loop that we had yesterday so i got a do loop forever and i'm just going to wait for 500 milliseconds at that first state and then i'm going to do something quite simple is i'm going to say i'll change that to make it even easier make it more obvious i'm going to say set ra1 to the not the value that's the opposite essentially think of it as the opposite for the time being of ra1 and then i want to set ra2 not the, that's the opposite of ra1 so i'm toggling these two so i can if i change this wait to one second and then i hit the make hex and program we can see it then program it and now we see a slower pulse if i um, change that to 100 milliseconds programs it this is the game so we can see that we've set an output well, this is important because tomorrow we'll be looking at input so this is this is an output and then we're toggling those outputs there are different ways of doing this of course so why don't we look at another in terms of using some variables or using um yeah we use a variable i think we'll use a variable Okay, so we're going to go into back into Synroid right, and see what we're doing. So we're going to leave these two status here, they're out. I think that's a good thing to do. Um, and then we're going to take out these initial values here. And we're just going to start with a basic piece of code that says do a loop forever. And then we're going to do some logic in there. So I'm going to declare a variable, define a variable, I'm going to dimension that variable, and I'm going to call it LED state. And it's a byte. I'm then going to set that LED state to zero, off. Okay, zero is the same as off. Now down here, I'm just going to assume this is logic. If LED state equals zero, then do something else. Do something. So if the LED state is zero, we're going to put ra1 equals 1 and ra2 equals 0. So this sets one set of state. This turns one LED on and one off. And then I'm going to set the LED state to 1. Because then the next time it comes through, it will be set. It will do the opposite, the else. Now I'm going to set that to zero, that to one, 
and put this to zero. So I'm toggling the LED state variable and I'm explicitly setting the, um, the register pins for the LEDs. Let's compile that up. And then we'll just toggle across to here. And we can see it looks like it's doing the same because it is. Okay, it really is doing the same. Now you might not believe that it's actually doing this. Um, the change has occurred. But what we're going to do in a moment is just look at how much code is generated. Okay, I didn't program it then, by the way. Now it's going to be a bit slower because I put changed it to one second. Great. So we have set the directions of the port. We've set the registers. Now we've introduced a variable called LED state that we can then test against. And what we can do is we're going to just have a quick look to see how much memory that is using. Okay. So to do it one way, and it's taking, and you can't see this, it's um, tucked away at the bottom of the screen here. Not sure why. Um, it says it's used program memory 68 and words with one byte of RAM. And that makes sense because we've used one byte of RAM for our variable LED state. So let me just revert that, take a copy of that code. I'm just going to revert all that back to our original. Just take that back out, put everything back as it was. I think that will do. We'll put it at one second to make sure it's the same. We're going to compile that up. We get the same one second delay. And that is 78 words, but no RAM. Okay. So interesting. So one method uses 78. And another method uses 68, I believe it was. Here we go, put it back. I'm just um, running through this now. So what we've done, we have different methods. We can use different methods, that's okay. You can do it any way you like, I don't care. You could do it another method, I think. Um, you could test the LEDs. You could test the statuses. But what we're trying to do today is very quickly just look at outputs, setting directions, and setting values. So we'll call that a wrap. And uh, tomorrow we'll be looking at inputs.